So this is the Amiga 600 that I worked on, which had this bad RAM chip here, uh, which I took out. And luckily this RAM chip was optional, so you could just take it out and the computer then just started booting. And I had real trouble. I was trying to put a socket in here to try and you know, get a new RAM chip in so I could just reinstall uh, the RAM chip dead easily. And that was just a total disaster. Uh, the sockets kept breaking and when I kept desoldering them, it was all getting worse and worse. And I also managed to take off uh, a little bit of the um, solder mask on the traces in between some of these pads on this side of the chip. So I just basically kind of butchered it, which is really bad, but then I thought I'm gonna have one more go. So I decided to put it on without the socket because the sockets were just such a disaster. I knew it was a bit risky because, because there's no solder mask on the traces in between there, it would be very easy just to get some solder, bridge some of these lines going through here and just not make it work. But I decided to go for it anyway. And I did manage to get it all soldered on as you can see. And the weird thing is, is that this side actually went on okay. The side where I thought I was gonna bridge all these solder things. I did get a few solder bridges, but I just took those off but I never actually bridged the ones here where there's no solder mask on the traces. Uh, it was this side that was actually really hard because I had to get the soldering iron in at this weird angle because this other chip's in the way. And I got all of the uh, lines connected except this one here, this pin eight. I just couldn't get the solder to, to bite onto the pad and onto the leg. And I tried it, I think at least three times and I just couldn't get it to do it. So in the end, I just opted out and said, I'm just gonna put a bodge in. So I put a bodge wire in from here to the next nearest place where this would have connected to anyway. That's actually worked. So it took quite a while to get that on. That's why there's no video of it. It's just me spending hours with a soldering iron, well, about an hour with a soldering iron at least. So it was quite difficult, but I am quite happy that this thing is back to its full one megabyte. And there it is, I'll show you. And I've not done a memory test on it, but it's booted up and it's clearly got more than half a megabyte of RAM. So it turns out that that actually worked. I wish I'd have just gone for installing the chip straight on the board in the first place. So I was, I was afraid of breaking something on the board and I thought this would be a better idea, but in the end it turns out it just wasn't. It's a shame I had to do the bodge because I was just one line of getting this thing in and you would have never known the difference. But I decided to cut my losses, not try and solder that thing. Well, I tried. I already tried to get it three times, but every time I did it, it just didn't work for some reason. Like I said, I think the leg is just slightly bent and it's not touching the pad. So I just can't get the solder to bite between the two without dumping a ton of solder in there or whatever. Even that didn't work really. So I'm very pleased with that. And if it wasn't for that bodge, you'd never know the difference. So that's the Amiga 600 that now basically works.